exponents are about standard form of a quadratic function. You've probably seen standard form before. It is a function of the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, you may have converted vertex form to standard form by multiplying things out, but it is considered um, standard form. So notice what we have here. We have three terms. We have a quadratic term, a linear term, and what's known as a constant term. Think about why this form might be super helpful. What's your favorite number to plug in? Well, if we're looking in standard form and you try plugging in 0, notice what happens. We get a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus c. So f of 0 ends up being equal to c. What that means is, if you are in standard form, you can clearly see your y-intercept at the point 0, comma, c. If you're in standard form, what's the vertex? Or, if you're in standard form, where are the zeros? These are things that we cannot readily see in standard form. So it's nice because we can easily see the y-intercept, but not much else. So on the next couple slides, we're going to investigate how we might graph a standard form, some tips that we might use. Ms. Marcus, yes, I, think, I, th I think we did something when you made the completing the square investigation. Oh. That well, might be helpful. Interesting. Interesting. So we might end up seeing a trick or a key fact about these that you might have seen before in the completing the square investigation. Here we have a quadratic 2x squared plus 12x plus 19 and it is in standard form and it's asking us to graph this. Well, let's see. I know that, well, I know the y-intercept is 19, 0, 19, but that's not too helpful here because our axes only go up to 10, so we need some other way to graph this. If I was interested in finding the vertex, I could easily put this in vertex form by completing the square. Let's think about if that would be easy or hard. I see that there's a 2 in front, so I know I'd have to factor that out, and that next term is even, so it wouldn't be that big of a deal if we started completing the square here. Let's see how... Let's do it. Let's do it. I think we can do it. 2 times the quantity x squared plus 6x, once we factor out a 2. Now we can complete the square with this binomial right here. Half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Ms. Strader, did we really just add 9 to this? Well, we added 9 to that expression, but that expression is being multiplied by 2. Oh, so I think we really just added an 18, which means we now have to subtract an 18, and then don't forget that plus 19 on the end from the original. So if, you, if that didn't make sense to you, you might need to go back and rewatch the completing the square video. We can now factor this perfect square trinomial into x plus 3 times x plus 3, or x plus 3 squared. And the last two terms, negative 18 plus 19, combine into plus 1. And this, of course, is still named f of x. Now it's old hat. We've seen this before. Our vertex is, of course, at negative 3, 1. Our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3. And let's plot that and see how we do. Negative 3, 1. Vertex of symmetry going through that point. And we know it opens up. What else can we do? I think we should maybe find a couple of points. Can we put the axis of symmetry in there? Oh, that's probably a good idea. Let me actually switch colors so we don't get confused with that being part of the graph. So here's our axis of symmetry. At x equals negative 3. And let's see what else we know about it. I know I want to plug in points near the vertex to try to find more points on it. Did you have another tip, Ms. Trainer? Yeah. Um, in my class, we talked about how that a value can be helpful mm. in finding some points. Interesting. So since our a value is 2, uh, we actually can go up 2 over 1 mm. from that vertex. Right there? Yep. But we can only do it from that vertex. We can't do it again from that point that you just put So there. we can't go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over that, 1 that forever. That's just good as a V. Right, that would be an absolute value function. So that's true, that A value, you might have noticed in some patterns, that is getting us the next two good points on the graph, the next two lattice points, I guess, um, from our vertex. So how would I get more points? What's the next good number we should probably plug in? 
You said before that you like plugging in zero. I do like plugging in zero, but I know that we're going to get 19 here, because I know that's going to be our y-intercept. And that's going to be off the charts. So maybe, let's see, we plugged in negative 3 to get the vertex. Negative 2 gave us that good point. Maybe negative 1 would be helpful. And actually, if you look at standard form, plugging in negative 1 isn't so bad, either in standard or vertex. Let's see, we get 2 times negative 1 squared, which is 2, plus 12 times negative 1, which is minus 12, plus 19. And that gives us positive 9. Did I do that right? Mm -hmm. So we have the point, negative 1, 9. And then, of course, using the axis of symmetry, which Ms. Strato reminded me to graph, we can reflect that. And now we have a nice skeleton to trace our parabola through. Very nice. Anything else you wanted to add about this one, Ms. Strato? No, I think that looks good. Cool. So we started in standard form, and we had to use a skill that we knew before to put it into vertex form. But what about this function. Here we have a standard form function, but our a value is one half. So if I try the same method as before, that means I'm going to have to complete the square and factor out a one half, which I don't know about you, Mr. Trader, but I certainly don't feel like doing I'm that. I'm not in the mood for doing Great. that. Great. Let's not do that. Let's recall a uh, fact that we hopefully learned in a previous exploration, and that is that the x value of the vertex of a quadratic function when written in standard form is negative b over 2a. Which I believe is also the axis of symmetry. True, since that axis of symmetry has to pass through the vertex. So x equals negative b over 2a is the equation for the axis of symmetry. Of course, a in this case would be 1 half, b would be 8, and c would be 35. So that's a really, really important fact, because if you don't feel like completing the square or anything, we can always use that to quickly find the vertex. I say we use it. Let's use it. Awesome. So negative b over 2a, in this case, would be negative 8 over 2 times 1 half. Ms. Strader, what is 2 times 1 half? That is 1. Awesome. So our vertex has an x coordinate of negative 8 over 1, which is just negative 8. But that's just the x-coordinate. Now we have to find the y-coordinate. Could we maybe put the axis of symmetry in as well right now? Ooh, okay. Axis of symmetry is x equals negative 8. So we can at least dot that in over here. But so, I'm not sure where to put the vertex because we need the y-value. Right, so we know it's on that line. Oh, okay. Well, let's see, we have an x value. How do we find, in general, how do we find the corresponding y value? Uh, I would plug in. I think that's a great idea. We have a function rule. We are looking for f of negative 8. So we're going to use negative 8 as an input and plug into our function. 1 half times negative 8 squared plus 8 times negative 8 plus 35. Let's see, half of 64 is 32. Minus 64 plus 35, I believe that gives us 3? Yep. Cool. So our vertex was at 8, comma, 3. And now we can plot that. Negative 8, 3. Now we can plot that as our vertex. So now we need to get some more points on our function. Mr. Reader, can I just go up 1 over 2 since our a value is 1, kind of like we did on that last example? You may absolutely not do that. I think I just got in trouble, so I think we can't do that. If you wanted to, you could go up half a box hmm. and over 1, but I still don't like doing that. Because then I'm not on a lattice point. That's not such a and nice point. And who knows, point. like, who's the, what's the difference between a half and a third on this, hmm. this little crummy grid? <laughs> Crummy. Are you calling my grid crummy? Maybe. Okay. Well, let's think about smart values to plug in then if I want to try to find some more points on here. I know that whatever our input is, we're going to have to square it and then take half of it. So it would be really nice if the value that I plug in, uh, when I square it, it would be nice if that was even. So then when we take half of it, it's going to be an integer so you're, land. you're looking for even perfect squares. Yes. I think like that would 16. be... Like 16. Ooh, 16's a good one. That would mean we'd have to plug in 4, though, or negative 4. And uh, 4 is really far away from the vertex. That's probably going to be off the charts. But negative 4, maybe that would be pretty good. Okay. So let's try that. Maybe I'll do that up here. f of negative 4 
let's see, half of the quantity negative 4 squared would be 16, plus 8 times negative 4, plus 35. What does that give us? Well, 8 times negative 4 is negative 32. Okay, so let's, we have 8 minus 32 plus let's 35. Let's add that with the 35. We'll get 3. So 3 plus 8 is 11. 11. Okay, so that's all the way up here. Not so bad. Negative 4, 11. And I can reflect that on the other side. If I wanted to plug in another point that would be on the grid, one that was near the vertex, maybe, maybe negative 6 would work. Let's try that. Because you'd get 36, which is an even perfect square. Ah, so I bet that's going to be a good value to plug in. F of negative 6 is 1 half of 36. I might as well, let's do that work in our head. I'm running out of that's space 18. Here. 18, okay. So 18 is 1 half of negative 6 squared. Plus 8 times negative 6 is minus 48. 48. Mm -hmm. plus 35. What does this get us? Uh, let's see. The first two get us negative 30, plus 35 is 5. 5. Oh, that's good. That's nice and on our screen. So negative 6, 5 was another point that we found. And, of course, you can reflect that on the other side. So here is our parabola that we graphed out of standard form. You want to make sure that you're smart about what you're given. I mean, if it's pretty easy to complete the square, you might as well go ahead and do that. Get it in vertex form. You got your vertex right away. You can plug in other points. So you want to make sure that you're smart. If you're, you don't feel like completing the square, you think it's going to be too complicated and give you too many fractional values, I would go for the negative b over 2a route. You just are then going to have to plug that back in to get the other half of your vertex, but then it's not so bad to start plugging values in. Anything else you want to add about that, Ms. Reader? I think it's just important to remember what you just said. Um, it's not like we should memorize which method is better. Exactly. It's, it's whatever is more efficient. Right. Efficiency is key. You don't want to box yourself into saying, okay, I'm just always going to do this. Right. Because sometimes your function might not lend itself nicely to that method. So, yeah, I hope that everyone is efficient when doing these problems in class. I would agree. Good luck, everybody.